two participants. I think I've already been introduced, so I will go straight into uh, my presentation. And as you can say, it, it's based on real practical life experiences and our work as subject of the University of Namibia. So I've titled my presentation, New Roles for Changing Times, you know, subject in campus liberals in context, in trying to align it with the theme of this webinar too. The second slide is just my photo, and now I go to the third slide. About in the webinar, this webinar contextualizes the changing roles of subject campus liberals at the University of Namibia in view of new research support, scholar communications, information literacy, bibliometrics, and data management support services. I open my discussion with you today with a quotation. One must never lose time in vainly regretting. The past no income complaining about the change. Cause us discomfort. For change is the very essence of life. Sure that in view of our theme. It is inevitable for that our week is changing because the world around us is changing. communications is the way it 
meclise çağırdı. conducted their work in the publishing trains they were teaching is being conducted in today's world and also to Focus on our users as best. We have a lot of the so called generation and X and Y who are. So we have to, uh, we are forced to change the way we operate. For a number of is a story a background and Just give you a brief background to the work of subject of the Tunam. Our subject of the brand that you know, perform traditional rules synonymous with African university libraries with regard to supporting the curriculum and scholarship of the university in relation to teaching and learning so the emphasis was too much also on teaching and learning and we also used to operate in the print world by the way traditional rules of libraries focus on collection development cataloging classification and indexing and discovery of information which was known then as user education. I remember that when I went to the library school for the very first time, everyone was always talking about cataloging, classification, cataloging, classification, cutting class. But the world is changing. The change in publishing trends, the open access movement, the textbook and general supply models, among others, have resulted in a new information ecosystem that has impacted on the information managers and knowledge officers globally, including subject of the two now. 
So there is a change because of what was just mentioned above there. In a bid to align our services at UNAM with the needs of today's students, researchers and members of faculty, we have added new functions to the roles of subject librarians. A summary of some of the selected roles is presented or discussed below. Let me start with the scholarly communications. We advise uh, research students and members of faculties on current trends, best practices, and available options in the research publication and dissemination methods and models nationally and internationally, including scholarly communications and open access publishing. We advocate for suitable models of scholarly communications and also promote preservation of faculty research outputs in the UNAM institutional repository administered by the library. Just to point out some, say, a practical example for the first one, a number of lecturers now you know that there are these uh, journals which are open access and they would like to publish uh, through them. But one of the challenges that they, what they face at UNAM is that they always now are required to pay those uh, uh, author publication fees. It's a global thing because whilst the open access journals are op open to the public for us to, uh, to read, you know, the people that manage these journals and edit and upload these works, they also need to be paid, so they, they are cost behind. So they charge these author fees. We have deliberated on that at the University of Namibia and I have also even visited the uh, University of Stellenbosch. I remember at Stellenbosch, what they do is that they pay 100,000 rands in advance to Biomed Central so that as their authors uh, publish through the Biomed Central, they will be deducting the fees and the fees can always be uh, carried forward. It's not wiped off. So those are some of the models that we have been discussing at UNAM so that we could follow the same approach. As subject librarians, we provide active support that helps to increase the productivity of lecturers' research, departmental, and faculty scholarship. Here, I um, mean that every day, almost every day, you find a lecturer that requests literature support services, or to search for information, which are the best sources. So we do provide advice to that and to supply and provide those services. We profile the current research faculty research interests first. Because if your subject librarian is possible for a faculty, it is prudent for you to know the research interests of all your faculty members, if possible, especially those that serve smaller faculties or departments. And then you are prepared for the for their uh, changing needs in terms of with regard to research. The other thing is also that lecturers at UNAM they have specific modules or courses that they teach. In the relation to that one. They do what we call to a topical research. Topical research is simply for them uh, to update their uh, lecture notes or literature for teaching purposes. That is different from research for publication. Understanding of a typical researcher's experience, including their workflow and how researchers access and use information within a discipline or subject at the different stages of the researcher's career is important in this type of service. We provide information alert services. Sometimes we do some bit of core research about scholarship of teaching, core researching about the scholarly publishing in specific area of knowledge. I've been approached by quite a number of lecturers with regard to that. They are still coming. Research consultations by postgraduate students and lecturers, answering in depth reference questions or queries, research profiles of academic staff and helping students to create literature maps. This is especially with the uh, postgraduate students. For them to do a detailed literature review, especially those that come from education, humanities, and social sciences, the right in depth literature reviews that are different from those that do clinical subjects in natural sciences. Following the systematic review, review workshop held in 2016, co researching about systematic reviews, here with the collaboration with the uh, University of Cardiff from Wales in England, in, in the UK. So what the facilitator on literature reviews came from the from University of uh, Cardiff, as I said, it was agreed at the workshop for people to, to develop these skills or to master the skills of systematic reviews. 
uh, we encouraged or agreed that some of the Unam Librarians will partner with some librarians at University of Cardiff. Where possible, some could still partner, uh, our local librarians could partner with academics and uh, produce a systematic review on a particular area of interest or research topic. So there's this co collaboration that is taking place right now as I speak. So there's collaboration between librarians and lecturers or identified in of Cardiff librarians. Teaching support. Subject librarians facilitate selection and acquisition of resources to be used by departments and faculties to support instruction. Subject librarians need deep knowledge of their disciplines to know which resources support which levels of students. This is quite important. So that in most cases, we also have a number of young and upcoming academics who are not widely read and may not know about a lot of resources in their different disciplines, but they have a teaching responsibility. So the subject librarian, if you're experienced, you can play a very vital role in this regard. We also have, of course, the aging academics uh, who may not very technology savvy and still rely on librarians to advise them to search for books. They still prefer these print catalogs and other sources, but the librarians can uh, teach them how to search from on subject catalogs and also even search by themselves and send these titles to them so that they know what has been published and what is current in their areas of teaching. Knowledge of e-book supply models in the open access movement is required. As we all know, if we're information professionals now, that a number of publishers are also now publishing e-books. The difficulty that we face from this part of the world is that you, for you to be able to buy some of these uh, textbooks that you're interested in, they may not be available in the model that you want, like we're used in the print world, where we select a specific uh, a title and we can determine I want three copies, two copies. Sometimes they're sold as packages. Although things are improving now in the publishing world with regard to e-book e supply models, a lot of textbooks that are prescribed are still not available in the packages that are being sold. So one has to understand uh, those dynamics for you to make prudent decisions with regard to acquisitions and collection development. So excellent knowledge of the available content of the disciplines is required. It is sometimes challenging to subject librarians those faculties of many academic departments and the courses taught under the same faculty. So they end up not knowing the subject in depth as may be required. Let me talk about a bit about expanding the roles in teach in support of teaching and learning. As I speak to you, we have just collaborated in the, the end of 2016 with the language center. Our language center is what is equivalent to another university, what they call communication skills center. The center that teaches the students about academic writing. In the, this part of Africa, we talk about also English for academic purposes. So their courses, general communication, English for academic purposes is one of the compulsory ones. So in our collaboration, in a bid to reintroduce information literacy at a better level and which is kind of formalized. We have agreed to pilot for the next two years, beginning now until the end of 2018, with the selected groups of students, especially at the, at the window campus. Uh, we'll be teaching, so some on the timetable, that is some schedules that have been allocated to English for academic purposes, we'll be teaching our information literacy there. We developed, by the way, this information test program through a collaborative venture with the University of Cardiff as well. But we also uh, read a lot of international literature. We were already having some other practices that we were working on. So now we have a new program that we are introducing. And the idea also is that the language center lecturers get to the grips with some of the content that they've been teaching under citation, referencing, and stuff like that. So, so that the librarians can teach more of that. Research seminars. Throughout uh, the year, we have a number of research seminars, and these are faculty-based. Sometimes it's the campus seminar. Traditionally, we have every, every year 
a master of education research seminar we have two of them here and i'm part of the seminar what is one of the facilitators and in that seminar i teach mostly literature review and literature research and the building research strategies but i go beyond especially for some research uh, students who experience problems or challenges with the supervisors we have a number of areas also i would like to admit as a university where we still don't have a properly trained academics we're a young university so we're still growing so sometimes it happens that students uh, and the supervisor will be missing each other or the student is not satisfied with the kind of support that they get from the supervisors so they end up in the library and the, uh, these ones spend a lot of my time we spend a lot of time through what we call research consultations after the seminars so the same during the seminars we trained in advanced information literacy and literature review literature searches usage of databases and stuff but immediately after that we start organizing now one-on-one -on -one, face to face uh, interactions and uh, during those interactions we also download a lot of literature first we straighten up the topic so that it has a focus and then we develop research questions or objectives whichever suits the student then we take our search queries or search terms and phrases from the research questions research objectives and topics and problem segments i'm also a course lecturer for a research methodology modules for the postgraduate students the postgraduate diploma and the master in the safety and strategic studies through the department of safety and strategic studies in the military school this one is for this year this is also came as a result of my uh, sessions that i was having with literature review literature searches the students requested the military school that i teach them these courses and uh, some of the academics after also one research workshop targeted at academic staff i was one of the facilitators last year it was organized by the tliu tliu stands for teaching learning improvement unit so the lecturers also convinced that we can do a good job to help the students so i'll be teaching from 15 march i'm busy developing the uh, lecture in uh, the lecture notes i'm almost uh, there for the postgraduate diploma then the, for the master's group i'll be teaching them in july literature research support i think i think i jumped to one slide there all right literature uh, search support to faculty and researchers Providing literature support uh, to academic staff based in the, in the different faculties, postgraduate students, and independent researchers has become one of our key services as such as subject librarians. Availability of too much literature to review or evaluate can lead to information overload. And I think these are concepts that we know from information seeking data studies. And also, as experienced librarians, we know that there's a lot of information available today. And sometimes our students do you have challenges in identifying which one is the authentic one which one is not they also don't have the time to be reviewing every publication so for them to access quality literature they also need the guidance the increase in our subscription based e-journals and databases such as science direct emerald university press high online channel francis age and sae publications i've simply selected those that we added after uh, from 2010 upwards we already held uh, EBSCO West and others before. We also have a, we have access to e journals and databases or a lot of literature. The cadres of the Research for Life program, we have access to Agora, Enari, Oware, and the ARDI. We also have access to e journals and databases, cadres of ERASP. Uh, I've just Take us a few examples from there, University of Chicago, Gesto, some, some societal journals. There are quite a lot. In addition to that, we now have the open access movement also adding a lot of literature, by, such as Biomed Central, Google Scholar, Director of Open Access Journals, Director of Open Access Books, Institutional Repositories, especially from universities, and organizational websites. Depending on your subject matter, I've deliberately taken the FAW, WHO, OIE is the World Animal Health Organization, and also our the government of the Republic of Namibia, the departments, ministerial websites, etc. So 
there is quite a lot of literature available online today. I've taken a who W-O-I-E and W-O-H-O because since this is an fowl led webinar, we, we teach agriculture and the fishery, uh, fishery sciences at the University of Namibia. So this is why I'm taking examples from there. We also have our school of medicine, uh, we have a school of nursing, we have a school of pharmacy, and we're introducing the school of dentistry. And we have a school of public health as well. It's now an independent school, formerly it was attached to the nursing science. So we have a lot of uh, schools, our academics and the students that can benefit from the Research for Life programs. And we would like to thank FAO, WHO, and all other organizations uh, uh, that are giving us uh, or that are making us uh, access this content. Uh, collaborative uh, relationships. Uh, collaboration and partnerships in various university committee levels, such as Senate, by virtue of being a head of department, I serve in Senate, which is the highest decision making body of the university in the academically. Of course, we have council representing the employer at, at the top. So, from the Senate, there are several subcommittees of Senate academic planning committee. Information Technology Library Committee, LITC, the Postgraduate Studies Committee, the Scholar Communications Committee, I serve in some of them, Research and Publications Committee, in some of the committees, my colleagues also serve there. There are many complex initiatives that require collaboration between the library, the various schools, those schools that I was talking about, School of in Medicine, School of Public Health, School of Nursing, and faculties and centers. We have research centers as well as academic centers and campuses. Some are satellite centers under what you call CODEL, Center for Open and Distance Learning, and previously called Center for External Studies. And now we also have a campuses which host certain programs. We have in total eight faculties at the University of Namibia, but we have 12 campuses in total. So some of these programs are offered through these various uh, campuses. And our 12 campuses, we have a library which is manned by library staff or managed by library staff and with uh, full services. But at the satellite centers, we only have a deposit of library collections and the materials are being managed by uh, the CODEL, something that we are still in discussion trying to address so that we can have librarians also serving there because due to demand as well. We have the School of Public Health, School of Veterinary Science, and the Southern Campus. Some of these schools are new. And uh, at the time of their establishment, and as each one of them gets established, there's a lot of groundwork and preparations to be made. So I've served in quite a number of them, namely School of Medicine, School of it's the Public Health, School of Veterinary Science, Southern Campus, and others. To now start building from uh, fresh a new collection of material to support the upcoming program. Some cases, uh, if there is a good collaboration, it works well. But one of the biggest problems or challenges that we always find is funding. So in every, almost every case, I have had to write submissions uh, to management to seek funding. But uh, things, sometimes things are well, sometimes things are bad. Like currently, we have serious financial constraints due to budget cuts from the government. We think that it's a passing phase, uh, we'll be able to overcome that so. Integration of former colleges of education libraries into the UNAM library system. In 2011, the University of Namibia merged with the four former colleges of education. They are now under the university. So they are with, with libraries which did not meet university needs or standards. So I, had, I was a principal researcher there with Dr. Naba Mutuma to do a study to check the quality of the materials and the type of service that you're offering, whether they met university standards or not, and also to be collaborating with other UNAM committees that were preparing for the major. So we did that. Now they are fully integrated and the, they're part of the UNAM system. We may still have inadequacies in terms of collections in some of these former colleges because they are still growing, but I think we've done a lot of work there. Then open access initiatives. For example, co-hosting the FODUSA, Forum for uh, Open Data and Open Science, 
that we we hosted co hosted last year it was a foul led workshop and also a, with their with their partners we also had the agora workshop which we, we held at the university of namibia and the facilitators were all from FAO and Itoka. The director of Itoka was there, both the Fodusa and uh, the Agora workshop. The Namibia Digital Library Project, this one is a new one. Uh, it's a mandate that had been given to the National Archives of Namibia, but uh, due to human resources capacity and the technology, they've now requested the investor of Namibia Library to establish this. So we are in the process of establishing that project. We also sometimes use hybrid models or team approaches in executing some of the projects or tasks. Now, Brian serves on various UNAM committees or task forces. One thing that we should quickly uh, uh, mention is that, especially for people that don't come from uh, universities, universities, most of them, they run on committee systems. So in almost every committee, uh, the library has the relevance to those committees because we're an academic and research institution. So they will be needing either research or teaching support and various other support types of support. The establishment of SEPAM, uh, this is our Center for Quality Management and uh, Assurance and Management. I was seconded there by the university librarian to serve in some of uh, the, the first smaller committee until we prepared for the very first audit, institutional audit of the university led by Africa, Euro Africa Connect, and we had to prepare a reports for the for that audit, preparation of that audit. I was one of the team leaders of in during that project as well. Myself and my colleagues, we have also served in the other uh, during faculty audits. Uh, what is the call what to call faculty audits? And also I've left the term accreditation there. In order to meet the standards of the Namibia Qualifications Authority, all our programs must be audited first by our SEPAM, and then they do the background checks, everything, and prepare the documentation for registration eventually of our programs on the NQF, Namibia Qualifications Framework, similar to South Africa SACWA. After that, there is what you call accreditation so that we meet international standards. This one is led by the in, in Namibia Council of Higher Education, NCHE. So both of them, SEPCOM and NCHE, when they are doing a faculty audits, program audits and accreditation, the library features quite prominently. We have to be responding uh, to all the questions, especially if there are any complaints from students, lecturers, about the inadequacy of the library in terms of service, in terms of resources, facilities, equipment. So we participate there and we also requested to compile reports. We also participate in the drafting of university policies, such as plagiarism, copyright, intellectual property, and many others. Scholar communications, I was part of it, and another one as well. The subject and all faculty librarians are library licensed with academic departments and faculty. This is the nature of our work. We have to have a regular daily interaction with the academic departments and the faculties so that we can support all their needs. The Faculty of Humanities and the Library uh, collaborated on one project which was called the SCAP, the School of Communications. It is the one that gave birth to the UNAM Institutional Repository. After the establishment of the repository, we went on to develop the School of Communications uh, policy. I was one of the members of the task force. After the policy, uh, then the, we were also given another mandate to serve in the scholar coordination uh, committee so that we can now monitor the implementation of the policy across the university. Of course, in every institutional report that the library has a role to play, we are the publisher, and so we specify standards, metadata, and all those other things, but we also give advice to lecturers and students who want to publish through the repository. What should they do? The investors of Cape Town, let me give them, I will give them the acknowledgement here because they were a very active and a collaborating partner and our advisor on this project. We are now collaborating with the International Investor of Management, IUM, on setting up their own institutional repository. This is also because 
the former dean of our faculty of humanities is now the provost chancellor for academic affairs and research and currently acting vice chancellor of the university of international university of management the sister university in window gateways to information and knowledge in a number of cases we serve as gateways for locating information for faculty and independent researchers some of our lecturers do not have sufficient searching skills while others have acting teaching and research loads they often acknowledge that we save their lives because we can quickly search and send them the literature that they are looking for and then it is smooth into their path and they can now spend their time scanning or reviewing the literature instead of, sp of spending more time searching for literature we need the outstanding skills in information discovery and literature searches to succeed in this job without carrying out these matters then there is management of bibliographic uh, records we have many requests from lecturers for training on how to use mendeley's or terror and not reference management software and our research students from fourth years master phd sometimes we can't fulfill the requirements because we need more libraries to be trained on how to use this reference management software but we are working on that and we already have a dedicated librarian on the training of a reference management software we're starting with the Mendeley because so that the the one which is open access or open source so that because the other one requires a subscription we don't want to put uh, our lecturers at the present when we don't know if they leave the university they will still be able to access uh, their uh, records or their research data knowledge on citation and referencing is critical especially to guide our research students open access scholarly communications is alluded to earlier on in the scholarly communications it is clearly stated that the library is the mandate to administer the institutional repository on behalf of the university so we are the ones who have to develop the guidelines on what should happen to the institutional repository some things we've already done but even now we are thinking of having a separate institutional repository policy so we'll be working on that one the first half of this year subject libraries are mandated to advise academicians researchers affiliated to inam and postgraduate students to depose to make their peer-reviewed scholarly outputs accessible through the institutional repository we do this because we want also to promote the research profile of the university we also want to see clear linkages between our academics and our students their scholarly work in the international uh, scholar community so either they, if they can publish through the reports that is a better but we realize that we may not have the capacity to be publishing everything and in some cases academics also wanted to publish still with international journals which are highly accredited with a higher impact factor than our own so under those circumstances we don't block them we advise them that they could still negotiate for either preprints or print so that we could still publish those through the repository in some cases uh, when they're dealing especially with the subscription based journals the publishers may refuse but we can still publish the bibliographic data and the abstract on the repository that will still be good enough it still shows the linkage between the researcher and the institution electronic copies of all examined thesis and dissertation submitted uh, by postgraduate research students and approved by the postgraduate studies committee i serve in the postgraduate studies committee and cleared by the center for postgraduate studies is fulfilling the requirements for a master degree or doctoral degree or doctor philosophy all these must be published or, or are published since 2006 electronically on the institutional repository we also it's mandatory for all our students to submit three physical uh, three physical copies uh, to the library in addition to the electronic copy we advise students uh, lecturers and the researchers on how to publish 
through other op open access platforms such as directly open access journals and Biomed Central. Undergraduate student support. We meant the undergraduate students to develop research critical analysis and informal literacy skills. Through information literacy instruction, we train students to demonstrate knowledge and application of skills in namely in two areas. One is information seeking, which concerns searching for and identifying relevant and up-to-date 